Hello and welcome to this video tutorial on what we are going to be doing as OOP. So we're going to be doing an introduction, okay, to object introduction to OOP, object oriented programming. Now, as a programmer, if you've done a little bit of programming in Python before, you may uh, have used data structures such as lists. So for example, I may have used a list which has got my name, and I may include information like Raymond, and we're going to go 36, and he's a teacher. Uh, I may also have a name like Jennifer, and we're going to go Jennifer. She is 30, not 334. And she is a, we're going to go, just fixing this, business owner. Now, using lists and arrays, is okay on a small scale, but when you've got a large amount of data or you've got a larger scale of information, one thing that you've got to be aware of is this can get a bit cumbersome. It can get a bit problematic because if you're using an index like position zero, position one, position two, and so on, but you've got larger data sets, it can start to get overwhelming and difficult for the programmer. Now, the good thing is there is a solution to this and it is called classes. So I'm just going to close this for a minute. Now classes, these are user defined data structures, all right? And they act like a blueprint. Now I'm obviously going to show you what these are in this video, but they act like a blueprint. And the idea is that you can control the properties like their name, their age, their address, all of those things within it. And then you can actually refer to them and be specific about changing maybe their name, changing their age, and you can reuse that blueprint. You can also control the behavior, all right? So inside this, inside this, you can control things such as walking, talking, breathing, running. Um, you can tr control the language that they talk. You might be, it might be that they have a method or function all right, which would look like def. You may have seen that if you've done functions before called walking. It might be that they have a function called talking, but you change that method. All right. Now we have a class, which is a blueprint. I'm going to show you how to set that up in a minute. We also have an instance of an object, which is like reusing it. So you can have people. All right. But an instance of that might be Ray. And in another instance of that might be Jennifer, as you've seen in my list up here. So I can create different versions of that, all right? The thing about the instance is the instance of it contains the real data, all right? An instance wouldn't be the blueprint anymore, but I'm gonna show you how to set up your first class, all right? So the first thing we need to do is we're going to go class, and we create a class, we're gonna use animals, all right? We're gonna create our first class called dog, all right? Now, now that we've got that set up, please be careful with your indentation here. Make sure that you're looking at how this is set up. Now we need to actually define and set up our parameters that we're going to use. So for this one, we're going to keep it simple. And we always start with self, we're going to put a name and age. In this case, we're going to have two parameters that we pass in. Now, what we've got here is self.name equals name. And I'll explain what I've done here in a moment. Just let me type this in. What I've got here is I'm what this is our blueprint. And I want to pass in two parameters, name and age. These parameters that are passed in will be stored within the class using self.name. So what if that was called Ray, that would be Ray. If that was called 36, that 36 would be passing in there. All right. Now to use this, this is our blueprint. But if we want to create an instance of that, I can then, so I'm going to have a, a dog and I'm going to create an instance called Pedro. Okay, so Pedro, okay, is dog and we're going to pass his name in there. And Pedro is seven. 
Now, if I want to use those attributes now and, and display them within my program, all I need to do is go Pedro dot name print Pedro dot age. So let's see if that works. All right. Can you see I've got it's showing me Pedro and seven. So I'm using this class as a structure. All right. I'm going to do another one now. I'm going to create a dog called Bob. All right. Bob is dog and we're going to pass his name in Bob. Bob is going to be free. Okay. We're going to go print Bob dot name print Bob dot age. Now we pass that in. All right. Now, in some cases, you may want to default so that the class has some fixed variables, if you like. We have some fixed attributes that are not changed. Um, you will be able to change them, but they're like your default setting. So I could assume that I'm working with Labradors. So what I could do is I could set up species equals Labrador. So by default, all of my dogs in my program, are got, this is going to be a program all about Labradors, okay? So watch what happens when I do print Pedro dot species. So you can see I'm using that there. Let me make sure I put my string around that. Can you see Pedro is a Labrador, all right? And again, if I was to print out Bob dot Bob, Bob dot species, Bob is now, run that, Bob is a Labrador. Now, the good thing about classes is that we will do more detail on this later on, but classes, you can actually replace the data that goes into it. So I might not want one of these dogs to be a Labrador. I might have changed my mind and in my veterinary service, I've decided I, I'm, I'm not going to exclude other dogs. I want to make sure I've got others. So what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to change this. So Bob is going to be a pug. Bob dot species equals pug, All right? So you can actually change the information I could even change his name again if I wanted. So, but we're going to go for, let's get rid of that at the moment. We're going to print Bob, make sure, print Bob dot species. And what should happen this time is it should have changed Labrador to a pug. So let's see if that's worked. There you go, Bob is now a pug. And the great thing about it, can you see, if I had to work with this list here, I would have to change this to a zero, this to a one, this, I would have to work with the index. The great thing about this is all I need to do is pick the specific attribute that I want to change. All right, so just as quick summary, we have our class, which is like our blueprint, but we can reuse that. You can even have methods, which we will come on to later, where there are certain behaviors within that, certain methods that you can call upon to use. We will do that later on though, but this is just your first lesson on how to set up a class and how to change attributes and how to declare it and define it, how it's set up. So I hope that that is a useful tutorial to get you started. What we will do in our next tutorial is I will show you how to set up some methods as part of this. All right.